today we're testing my knowledge. Who's excited? Not me. On a serious note. What's up, nail babes? How are you today? I hope you're doing just swell. As you read by the title, I'm gonna be testing today. Testing my knowledge, you know? Let's just see if my brain can compute today. Some things that I have not studied or read about since 2013? So seven years ago. That was quite a long time ago. If you are new to this channel and have no idea who I am, what's up? My name's Jenna. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, I laugh at myself a lot. And yeah, I'm a licensed nail tech. I'm pretty sure you've heard that a million times if you've been on my channel. What's new? Not a whole lot. If you have no idea how the beauty world works when you're going to get licensed, you gotta go to school, you gotta learn a bunch of stuff, just like you go to high school, you go to regular school, you go to all these different schools to learn a bunch of stuff, right? That's what school is for. And you gotta take a test in order to get your license. So you do a written test and a practical test. I did take my test on a computer screen. I can't remember how many questions it was, but yeah, you take your written test first. It's just multiple choice questions and then you take your practical which is when you have a fake hand and you really gotta practice out what you're doing or if you're going to cosmetology school to do hair you'll have a doll head and a hand etc etc whatever I don't know I went just for nails I passed my exam the first time but I'm just gonna keep it real there's probably a lot of things that I don't remember <laughs> because the things that you learn in school, you learn a lot about like the anatomy of skin and nails and keratin and blah, 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 all this stuff that you don't really like use those terms in your everyday life as a nail tech. You just don't. We don't go around saying, oh, your matrix to your eponychium to your hyponychium to the blah, blah, blah. We just don't go around using those words to be people because if you're not educated in certain terms, people are gonna have no idea what the heck you're talking about. So I went online and found this, California National Nail Technology parentheses manicuring written examination. So basically you can go to nictesting.org for the most current testing that is up to date, I guess. Hello. I printed out this test, or actually my mother printed it out for me, and it does have the answers. But if you look here, so these are the questions. These are where the answers are. I had my mom delete those out because my mom is just super genius and knows how to do that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna briefly tell you guys what this little test consists of. So that way we can just kind of get a little background on what we're going to be exercising our brain on today. First things first is 45% of the test consists of scientific topics, bacteria, viruses, fungus, sanitation, disinfection, sterilization, all that jazz. A whole bunch of stuff actually. And then 55% of it is actually nail technology procedures. So client consultation, nail equipment and implements, how to use the products that we're trained to use, and how to perform certain services, all that stuff. It is much more than just painting your nails, if I may. Oh my god, just looking at this, it's giving me flashbacks from high school and school, and it's giving me anxiety, and I just don't want to do it right now, but we're going to. So, let's put on my glasses, because they do, in fact, make me feel a little bit smarter, and let's start the test. finished. Some of them were a lot harder than I expected, but a lot of them I feel pretty confident about, so we'll see how I did. I do have my answers here. I have a red marker. Usually teachers used a red pen back in the days, and who else hated when they just would like write all over your work and you're just like, 
I get it. I'm stupid. You just want me to restart. Just kidding, I need that. Time to start the grading process. And let's just start with question numero uno. Pumice stone is used in pedicuring as an abrasive, a bleach, a lubricant, or an astringent. And I said A, abrasive, which is correct. Ding, 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 ding. Numero dos. What is the first step in performing a manicure? Now this one kind of threw me off because a manicure is like a manicure. It says, shake the nails, soften the cuticles, clean under the free edge, remove old polish. Now, the first thing I do is remove the old polish, but like, is that part of the manicure? I don't know. If it's not remove old polish, I would say shape the nails, but let's see what it is. It's D, so it's right. I got it right. Wow. Go Jenna. Number three. Where should all manicuring cosmetic supplies be kept when not being used? A, on a clean shelf. B, on the manicuring table. C, in a clean manicuring kit. Or D, in clean clothes containers. Now, I absolutely am confident that the answer is D because it has to be a closed container and it has to be labeled clean. And it is, in fact, D is in dog. Wow, three for three people. I am on a roll. Number four. Which one of the following is a condition in which the cuticle splits around the nail? I mean, I obviously thought it was hangnails, the first one. I don't even know how to pronounce the other ones. This is what I'm saying. Manicurists don't go walking around saying pterygium or onichiopagi, onichiorehixis. Yeah, no, I've never said those in my life. The only one I knew was hangnails, so I said A, because that's around your cuticles and it does split. I deal with it all the time. So what is the answer? A it is, folks, hangnails. Number five, nerves and blood vessels are found in the nail, bed, wall, plate, or grooves. Definitely the bed because that's under your nail plate. You don't have blood vessels in your nail plate, which is like your actual nail. It just makes sense to say a bed, which is correctamundo, a baby. Number six, an antiseptic is used in manicuring to a bleach the nails, b treat minor cuts, c smooth corrugated nails, d give the nails a high sheen. Antiseptic is not going to bleach the nails because then you would just use bleach and it's not going to smooth corrugated nails. That would be like using something abrasive like a nail file or something, right? And it's not going to give you a high sheen. You need like a top coat or something for that. So I said B, treats minor cuts. I don't know, let's see. Number six, is B treating those minor cuts? Wow, we are six for six. So right now, we're pretty close to passing. I don't know, let's see, number seven. After each use, manicuring implements should be A, wiped with a towel, B, wiped with a tissue, C, cleansed and disinfected, or D, placed in dry storage. Definitely C, cleansed and disinfected after every use. But then they also, after that, have to be placed somewhere dry, but not storage. But I said C, so let's just see what the answer is. Seven, C, so we are passing right now. Like, good job, Jenna. That was a little hard. Okay, number eight. For which one of the following are oil manicures recommended? This one was a tough one. I tried to do process of elimination here. We'll see how I did. A, don't know how to say this. Leuconichia, leuconichia, leuconichia. That, B, split nails, C, brittle nails, and D, prevention of infection. Oil is not gonna prevent infection. If anything, I would think it would spread it. I don't know. And it's not going to help brittle nails, uh, I don't think. Just left me with A, which I have no idea what that is. So let's see what it is. Eight. Wow, I got this wrong. Oh, it is C. Holy smokes. For which one of the following are oil manicures recommended? Brittle nails. I wonder why. Let's Google what leukonychia is. A medical term for white discoloration appearing on nails. Oh, so if I had known that, I would have known that oil manicures probably wouldn't help that. That would have helped my process of elimination, but... Yeah. So I got one wrong. Number nine, what is the actively growing part of the nail? A, linola, B, matrix, C, mantle, D, 
free edge. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see, I originally put free edge, but then I thought about it and I was like, whoa, wait a second. Your nail doesn't grow from the tip of your nail, your free edge. So it starts from the back, which is your matrix. That's what I put. All of these terms I very much remember, but I don't exactly remember the exact definition of them. So I might have gotten it wrong. Let's see, number nine is B, matrix. So I got it right. So this photo shows a lot of what we learn in nail school. So like your nail plate, nail matrix, which is like right under your cuticle where the nail grows out, which is what question number nine was. Now let's move on to question number 10, which is the last question. As of right now, I passed though, so I feel good about this. But anyways, number 10. What should be applied to a split in the nail before wrapping it? A, top coat, B, base coat, C, adhesive glue, or D, nail hardener? I took this question as like back in the day people used to do silk wraps So that's what I was kind of thinking of like if you had a broken nail They would put a silk wrap on it before putting polish or whatever on top of it Just to help keep the nail shape like if you had a broken nail like right here at your free edge We would put a silk wrap over it and then just do our regular manicure etc from there Which I do have a hack for where I use a tea bag instead of a silk wrap because they don't really sell silk wraps anymore it's really unpopular. If you're interested when you have a break in your nail, how to fix it with a tea bag, make sure you click that uh, little thing up there, the eye. Click that. Anyways, I said C, glue. I did process of elimination for this question as well because you're not gonna put top coat on it. Top coat isn't gonna do anything. It's not strong enough. Top coat is just for shine, basically. And you're not gonna put nail hardener. So I said glue because you're gonna wanna glue it before you put the silk wrap on it to keep it together. Let's see if that answer is right. Number 10 is C, as in cat. So here we are. Wow, I impressed myself with this exercise, I was feeling a little bit cocky there for a moment. I kind of thought maybe I would have gotten 10 out of 10. I'm sure if this was 100 questions, it would have been a little bit harder. There are a lot of words here that I just don't remember because like I said before, I've said it a couple times in this video, we don't go around saying pterygium to people because they're gonna have no idea what that means. We don't even go around saying like, oh, your matrix is damaged because clients are gonna have no idea what the heck I'm talking about, you know? So we gotta kinda dumb it down for people who have no idea what these terms mean. That whole process of elimination thing that they teach you in school kids, it works. Let me just say, because I used that for quite a few of these questions and got some of them right, except for number eight. Damn you, number eight. It is interesting to, seven years later, take a test like this with questions that I haven't had to answer in so freaking long because it just shows that like, oh, maybe I should know these things, but maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments because it is kind of weird to think about that we don't really have to keep our minds fresh. On my nail videos, I do like to try to teach you guys something that maybe you didn't know before. So I hope you learned something new with this video, like what Leconichia is, which is when you have white spots on your nails. So yeah, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up for myself, for this practice exam. You know, you can find a lot of interesting stuff on the internet, but this is actually from State Board of California where you can find sample questions for free. You can also find other questions where like you have to pay if you want like 100 questions or something, which if you're going to school might be a good idea. So check that out. Today's video shout out goes to Alondra, Miss Alo. Thank you so much for watching Alondra, wherever you are. And that's it for this week's video. So I will see you guys all next week on next week's video. So long and farewell my babes. Until next time.